Hey guys, Dr. Boots here coming up with another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about formal charges. Now, this is an easy thing to do, guys. A lot of people get intimidated by a formal charge. It's not hard. It really is rather simple. Okay, so let's pull up the structure for each of these uh, ions. Now, this is one that you're all familiar with. This is hydronium. Now, hydronium is positive. You all know that, H3O+. Plus. Everyone knows that from general chemistry. But what you don't know, or what you haven't probably considered, is where is that positive charge? Normally, you would draw it just right there and forget about it. Not an organic. We dig in a little deeper in organic. You have to know which atom contains that positive charge. So let's look right here. Here's the Lewis structure of hydronium with the charge missing. So we have to draw the charge in. So what I tell students to do, and here's how I do it. I, I don't like the formulas books give. Now, if you like the formulas that books give, by all means, use those formulas. Not a problem. I always had a hard time remembering these silly formulas. So I like to make little artistic, cartoonish ways to do it. And here's how I would do it. What I would do is I would take this Lewis structure here, and I would break it down. And I would say, okay, there's an oxygen with a lone pair. No problem. And then I would say, okay, for every bond the oxygen has, so this oxygen has one, two, three bonds, I'm just going to give like that, and then the hydrogen over here, and then the hydrogen over here, and then the hydrogen over here. Now, this is not occurring chemically. This is not happening chemically. This is a thought exercise or a mind exercise or a thought experiment on how to determine formal charge. Now, what I did, it's very simple, is I took every bond surrounding the oxygen and I broke it. I gave each atom that was part of the bond, the hydrogen and the oxygen for this in this example, one of the electrons from the bond. Remember, single bonds have two electrons. So each atom got one electron each. So notice, there's two electrons here between this oxygen and hydrogen. So there's an electron here and an electron here. Oxygen, hydrogen. Same thing down here. One electron to the oxygen, one to the hydrogen. Same thing here. One to the oxygen, one to the hydrogen. Okay? That's all I did. Now, sorry guys, that's my mic stand. I keep smacking it. Now, what I do next is I say, okay, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five electrons surrounding it at this point. One, two, three, four, five electrons surrounding it at this point. We look at the periodic table, we find that oxygen's in group 16. So oxygen, oops. Seven, or not seven, sorry, six. Six valence electrons normally. So normal neutral oxygen has six valence electrons. This oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five. That's one less. It's missing an electron. It's missing a negative charge. It's got one less electron than it does proton. So that means this oxygen right here has to be formally positive. And then you would just indicate that by writing the positive charge close to the oxygen. You can circle it if you want to. That's fine. Or you can leave the circle off. That's also acceptable. Okay? I like the circle. So that's how I determined the oxygen is delta. Is not, no, not delta. Formal positive. That's how I determined it. That's how I knew that that oxygen, oxygen was indeed positive. Okay? Oops. Sorry about that, guys. That kind of got funny there, didn't it? There we go. That's better. Okay? So let's try the nitrogen. Or sorry, the NO. Now... Maybe you want to pause the video here. Try it on your own. Don't let me answer it for you. Try yourself. All right, so let's get a look here. Again, I'm going to use the same thought exercise I did before. Here's my nitrogen. There's its lone pair. Here's the oxygen. There's its lone pair. Now, this is a triple bond. So each one of these bonds contains two electrons. One, two, three. One, two, three. No problem. One, two, three, four, five. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. So the oxygen also has five valence electrons. Now, if you look up nitrogen in the periodic table, you'll find that it's in group 15. So nitrogen 
normally will have five valence electrons. Neutral nitrogen has five valence. So this nitrogen right here has five valence electrons. Neutral nitrogen from the periodic table has five valence electrons. So therefore, this nitrogen in this Lewis structure is neutral. It doesn't have a formal charge. All right, so far so good. Come over here. Two, three, four, five electrons around this oxygen, five valence electrons. We already discussed oxygen, normal, negative, uh, neutral oxygen has six valence electrons. Wait a minute. So this oxygen here is missing one. So just like over here where the oxygen was missing one, this oxygen has to have a positive charge. It's formally positive. It's missing an electron. Okay. Now it has an octet. Don't get me wrong. These, these atoms all have octets. It's just that in order to achieve the octet, nitrogen had to use up its electrons to do it. It still has them. It's still part of a bond, but it makes the oxygen positive, formally positive. All right. Here's one for you guys to try. Go ahead. Pause the video if you have to. Figure out if there's a formal charge here. There may not be one, but there is. All right, guys, pause the video, give it a try. All right, welcome back. I'm sure you all paused the video, and I'm sure you all did this problem. Nitrogen bonded to boron. The boron has three hydrogens like so. Here we go. All right, now let's use the little mind, the little mind exercise I told you to do. Nitrogen, boron, so there's the electrons for this bond right here, okay? Nitrogen, hydrogen, 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 there we go. So there's all the atoms that are around this nitrogen right here. Okay, let's do the ones around the boron now. Let um, me get a different color. You can't really see that. Let's try green. Hydrogen. 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 So now, if we look on the periodic table, we'll find nitrogen. It's five valence electrons. If you don't believe me, look at your own periodic table. Boron has three valence electrons. So let's look at the nitrogen first. Here's nitrogen. One, two, three, four valence electrons. Nitrogen normally has five. So this nitrogen here only has four valence electrons around it. If we do our little trick, if we do a little tool here, so this nitrogen here has to be positive. And I know you're all thinking, oh, well, we're done. We found the formal charge. Be very, very careful. Be very, very mindful of that. Notice the boron, one, two, three, four. So wait a minute, boron normally only has three. Neutral boron from the periodic table has three valence electrons, but our boron has four. So boron must be negative. So there's two formal charges in the same molecule. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. Don't be surprised by that. That happens quite a bit. So that's how you do it. Now, that just a, this question is just kind of to show you. Don't just find a formal charge and quit. There could be th there could be more. There could be numerous formal charges in a molecule. It's it's possible. We don't see it very often in an organic one, but if, as you get further and further along, especially get into proteins and DNA and stuff like that, you can see multiple charges. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now here are some common bonding patterns that you see all the time. Okay, boron. When boron has four bonds, boron is negative. You'll see it all the time, okay? Carbon. When carbon has four bonds, it is neutral. If it has three bonds, no lone pair, it's positive. Three bonds and a lone pair, it's negative. Now, you can memorize this whole chart if you wanted to. Or you can just remember how that tool I showed you and how to figure it out on your own. And eventually, you're going to see the same patterns over and over again. You're just going to know them. You're just going to remember them. You're just going to know them, Okay? Organic chemistry really is about pattern recognition. You know, I've seen this pattern before. It was like this before, so it's probably like this now. Okay? Nitrogen with four bonds right here. 
plus charge, nitrogen with a lone pair, one lone pair, free bonds, neutral. Nitrogen with two lone pairs, two bonds, negative. Memorize this if you want to. I wouldn't. I would just use my tool. The tool that I gave you, just use it. And here's a hint. Work enough problems to become familiar with these bonding patterns so you can recognize other patterns as being either unusual or wrong. Okay? That's really good. Recognizing when something is incorrect. Hydrogen having two bonds. Oxygen having five bonds. Carbon having seven bonds. I mean, these are things I can just, I look at your exams all the time and I see these little mistakes all the, well, they're pretty big actually if you draw six bonds to carbon. But I see them all the time. Don't do them. They cost you dearly on exams. Keep yourself tight. Keep your, keep your mind focused. Don't allow yourself to draw five bonds to carbon. Just know that it's wrong. Don't draw two bonds to hydrogen. It's always wrong. Okay? Be mindful of these things. Now, with that, we're going to stop here with this video. We're going to pick it up next time with resonance forms. Resonance forms are a big, big deal. So be ready for that. Be really, really awake. Highly caffeinated for that video. Now, this one's over, so I'm going to wish you all good luck, good chemistry. We'll see you soon. All right, guys. Take care.